It's time for Tech Talk with Matthew Dickerson and I'm your host, Tony Graham. We're going to be continuing the morning session where we were going through the top 20 technology gift guide and it was in no particular order. We're not going to get through the, the, all the 20, but nonetheless, Matthew. Uh, we've got a few, certainly... a few to get through, haven't we, Tony? There's, there's too many technology gifts out there. Well, there actually is. Now, the first one we'll look at this afternoon is, is the UV, uh, <laughs> the UV foam sanitizer. That's ultraviolet light, by the way, foam sanitizer. These sort of things have been out for a little while, Tony, but they haven't been very popular and not many models were around. It was probably more an experiment from someone. But then this little thing called coronavirus came along, or COVID-19 in particular came along, and UV phone sanitizers suddenly became very popular. So these are things that have developed rapidly over the last six months. The current models that are out there are a little bit bigger than a smartphone, so you can fit your smartphone in there easily. They guarantee to kill 99.9% .9 of germs. They don't use any chemicals. They don't use heat. They don't use liquid. It is all UV. It takes about five minutes. So you put your phone in there, leave it for five minutes and pull it out, and it's then germ-free. But people are using it for other things as well. So you can put your keys in there, your glasses. You might put some jewellery in there. Anything that you see people handle and you're a bit worried about maybe I might start spreading COVID-19, I might just want to sanitise my items and you put them in the UV sanitizer, leave it for five minutes and pick it up and you feel confident and safe that you've got no coronavirus on that particular item. Great idea. It absolutely is. Now here's one for me, Matthew, you know, being the age I am now, location track trackers. And I might add I've got some relatives who could do with that because they can't even find their car in a car park. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a bit tougher, doesn't it? So this Tile is probably the most common brand of these, but there's a few different ones out there. And the idea of these is they're Bluetooth connected devices. So you connect your keys to them. I know one of my daughters used to put one in her teddy bear. Anything that you might lose or misplace on a regular basis, they're probably about the size of a 50 cent piece. So they're kind of that size. So they're not small enough to stick on the side of your glasses if you often put your glasses down and can't remember where they are. But the idea is that you have it on your keys, for example, you're about to walk out the door, you're like, oh no, where are my keys? I can't find my keys. And you pull out your phone, you just simply click the tile location on there and it will start to make a noise so you can walk around your house and find it. It'll also give you a little map to show you approximately where that is. Obviously that's accurate to within a certain range, but not to the actual millimetre where it is. And if you've left it somewhere that's out of Bluetooth range of your phone, it'll show you two things. One, the last location that it was known to be at when you last saw it on your phone or, or in contact with your phone. But if there's other people with the same app on their phone, it can actually use the network of smartphones and the app to actually find it, even if your phone's not close to it. So you might have left it in Sydney and you're in Dubbo or Wellington and you sit there and open up your smartphone, you might see it if someone nearby has actually got the Tile app on their phone. So great little concept. They're fairly cheap, low power. You can either get them that are completely sealed units or you can replace the batteries on them. So yeah, good little idea for people that lose things on a regular basis. Mm, I like it. Anyway, now, sometimes things just get even more ridiculous than what they already are. <laughs> An air selfie flying camera. So I used Why would you to, need that? Well, I used to be the worst offender, Tony. If I just wanted someone to take a photo of myself or a group that I was with, I'd just grab any stranger that walked past and say, could you please take a photo and hand them my phone and away they'd go. I never lost a phone in that way, so that's been good. But people are a little bit more reluctant now for you to hand them your phone and they're a bit worried about coronavirus on there. Now you can tell them that you've actually put your phone through a UV sanitizer, but they may not believe you. So it's harder and harder to get people now just to take a photo of you or a small group or, or a selfie. So the solution is obvious that you get a drone. Uh, an air selfie flying camera is essentially a drone designed to do one thing and one thing only. And that is take off, go a few meters in front of you, Train, using AI, train the camera on your face, take a photo, you can set whether you want a wide photo of a group, for example, or a close-in photo if it's just you, take the photo and then come back down and land. So it's, it's only small, it's only got a short amount of battery life because you don't need it to fly for long, but it's a way for you to grab selfies when it's been a bit hard to grab selfies. So this is pretty important to a group of people that may be a little bit younger than you and I, Tony. Yeah. Now, a mini photo printer. That rings bells of um, cameras that used to do exactly that. 
Yeah, you're right. I used to be very jealous, Tony, of the, the old Polaroid cameras. Kids would bring them to school and they'd yeah. take a photo, wave it around on the air for three minutes or however long it was, and bam, a photo would appear. I just thought that was absolutely unbelievable yeah. technology. But of course now, yes. that's a bit yesterday, if you like, now all our photos are on our phone. And so we just scroll through those. And every now and again, you think, gee, it'd be nice to actually have a good old fashioned piece of paper or an actual print of that. So you, you can buy a little mini photo printer now. A number of different brands are bringing these out. They connect via Bluetooth to your smartphone. You scroll through the photos, pick the one you want, click on that photo, print straight to the mini photo printer. And most of the photos are, say, two by three inch. You can get some a little bit larger, the old traditional photo size. And many of them come with a sticky back on them. So you just basically peel them off and stick them anywhere. Instant bumper stickers, instant stickers to go on your friend's bedroom, for example, or basically stick whatever you want, wherever you want, with the convenience of printing it within a few minutes. Mm, well, that's very nice. How about, though, a portable wireless charger power bank? I reckon that would be pretty good. Yeah, they are. Power banks have been around for a little while, but they've gone a step further now with most phones, most modern phones coming out now being able to be charged wirelessly. You are now getting power banks that are coming out that will charge wirelessly as well. So rather than plug a lead in and fiddle around with those clumsy leads that sometimes break or they sometimes get a bit frayed because you're using them in and out all the time, then you have a, a wireless charger bank. It charges up wirelessly, and then when you want to use it, you just sit your phone on top of it, and it'll charge up your phone wirelessly. The greatest thing about wireless charging is you don't have specific connectors designed for different models of phone. So, oh no, I've got a Samsung or I've got an Apple that's got a different connector. It's just wireless, and the wireless charging standard Thankfully, and hopefully this continues on, Tony, thankfully it's a common standard that all phone manufacturers use. So if you've got a wireless charger bank, it doesn't matter what type of phone individual model you've got, as long as it charges wirelessly, sit your phone on top and away you go and charge up. Mm. Now, this is a great one for you, Matthew, seeing you're such a poet. Um, an audio shower head. Well, a poet I may be, Tony, but a singer I am not. And so the only place that I do <laughs> sing is in the shower. But sometimes you'll be mm. singing a song and just having an absolutely wonderful time in the shower, blasting out a tune, and you just don't know the tune or the, the next words. And so it's a bit hard to get a bit of music into the shower without deafening the rest of the household unless you've got an audio shower head. So these audio shower heads basically clip on to your shower head. They're water resistant, surprisingly enough. They're designed to basically Bluetooth connect to your smartphone or an MP3 player that you might have. They need to be within about 10 metres of the shower head. So you leave your phone out in the shower or out in the bedroom near the shower and basically start the music there and you jump in the shower and away you go. You've got your audio shower head blasting out the tunes. You can sing as loud as you like and not annoy too many other people in the household. So great idea. Well, next thing they'll have um, a soundproof shower cubicle, no doubt. <laughs> well, for my singing, that might be necessary, Tony. <laughs> well, how about an indoor garden? I reckon that'd go down pretty well. Yeah, I like this idea. I have not got a green thumb at all. And the idea of, of tending to a little garden or an indoor garden is kind of not my cup of tea. I, I really, I suppose I don't have the patience for waiting for it to grow and making sure I go and put a bit of water on each day. So an indoor garden that's programmed, self-watering, self-lit, and basically the herbs or the veggies you might want to grow in there are already pre-planted. So basically you get it out of the box, you plug it in, fill it up with water, and then forget about it. And then come back weeks or a month or so later, and some of those things will have grown for you without you having to do anything. The light's been taken care of, the water's been taken care of, everything was right to go. So I like this idea. So it's a little bit of nature, but mixed in with a bit of technology. Yeah, all sounds pretty good. Yeah. And you'll be listening to Tech Talk with Matthew Dickerson on Binge Ang 91.5. Stick around next week for the same times on a Tuesday in the morning and in the afternoon for more great sessions just prior to Christmas. Well, I assume you've, you've got my address, Tony, so all those presents you can get out in the mail to me before Christmas. Thanks very much. I'll see what I can do, Matthew. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, we'll <laughs> talk next week. You, you could be in for a surprise. <laughs>